Merry Christmas all. Things have changed a little here, so I can't give this the time it deserves at the moment. But I don't want the momentum to stop on it. So here is my Christmas gift to the Maker community. The files are now on a GitHub and available to everyone to develop further if they so want to. The files include the extruder, the carriage and the cooling pipes for the CPAP fan. The coupler is for a 404 Sunny Sky motor, but you should be able to adapt that to any motor or even a mount for a pulley or a worm drive should you want to go into an even smaller option to power it if you believe that that's the way forward. I haven't tried to print this in FDM yet, so only in resin, and I use TR300, which is a frozen product. So that's something for the community to work on and figure out for themselves. The video following this goes through the process of fitting the extruder together. Now I've tried to do this in a way that most could do at home with simple tool, tools rather than in my workshop. Unless you have a please make sure you watch the assembly video before downloading this and trying to assemble it. There are some hand skills required and you need to be sure yourself that you are able to do this. Now on to the assembly video. So basically we start off by pre checking the holes are okay and we just take our time with this. We do not rush because resin is a bit fragile. As much as I'd like to say that this is as strong as strong can be, sometimes along with strength you end up with brittleness. So I'm using a 2mm drill. These will be tapped out to 2.5, so that's uh, 0.25 of thread per side. So that's the start of the prep for those. So I'm just using a tap here. Nice and slowly. You might pull that out. So you just got to be careful with the resin bunching at the end of the hole. And you don't want to push it in or pull it out. You want to let the tap do the work for you. Now I'm just holding it on the end so that once it grabs, I know that it's done. It's also not going to snap my tap off in the resin and it's not going to cause a point where the resin explodes from the inside as the tap starts to load it in, a, in an odd way. You can see the amount of uh, material that comes out and that's all getting pushed down to the end normally so you've got to that's that's why you've got to be exceptionally careful when you're going into blind holes because that material itself will cause the hole to blow out or in the case of metal it will cause the tap to snap last one So we just test our holes to make sure that they're going to be holding stuff down. Now once it gets tight in the hole you don't want to push it through on resin, you just want to size your bolt to suit. So I'll put some slightly smaller bolts on this one. We want to check our clearances. As you can see, it's almost clearance, but not quite. I need another drill. Four eight. So 
I'm also going to take my removal. Just push that down through here to make sure. that we have the clearance we need. So just to flatten everything up, I use a just a bit of flat aluminium plate that I had laying around. And I just gentle pressure Just because I want the back of this to be nice and flat because it bolts up directly to the motor drive. So it's very important that those services are the best they can be to get that level of grip up so that you're not relying on the shear of the bolts to do it. Alright, so this and are ready to bolt to this. Nice and snug. That's what we want. Let's push that on nice and gently to get to the surface. Now the orientation of these holes is quite important. You need to be able to get to them all. Now you can see at the moment that if I put this on here getting to these holes from the top of here is going to be an issue. So we look for the hole that matches and puts the others equally around. Normally you would use a talk device on here. The only talking device will be my voice. I'm going to do this with what's called experience. I feel like that's quite good. I'll just give it a couple of seconds to relax and just get a feel. Not quite happy with that. So now what we do is as much as uh, printing services are fantastic, they never quite run true. I'm not sure if I can show this to you. But you can usually get your drill, if it's a good drill or if it's a new drill, to run pretty true in the truck. So what we can use that for... with a hole. This is why I use this one. I know you were all waiting to find out why I was using such an odd piece of material. Hole, hole. So with a little bit of work you can get your services running nice and true. So now that we've got that all running true, we want to bolt these two together. Same as the last one. We're just doing it up so that it feels nice and good. Alright, so that's that all assembled. So, same thing here. Curing it all nice and aligned. careful not to put too much pressure on it so that you're making a deflection. Now, I could do this in a lathe. I could do this in a lathe. I have one. But I'm trying to do this in a way that anyone can do. 
So just a couple of seconds on there each time and just try your bearing. The bearing to be tight, but not too much. Because when this is printed, it's not actually truly round. I mean, I have my triangle set up very high in my STL out, uh, export, and it is pretty round, but there's still little square edges in it. So this is just taking off those square edges, and nothing else. Okay, it's just a tiny little bit more. As you can see, it's all nice and running true now. So that helps with the balance as it's spinning up to speed. It's it's hella messy, but you know it is what it is. So now that we've done all that, we've got to wipe the inside of our magnet nice and clean. I'll actually take that out and use compressed air to to blow all this off and make it all super pretty and not look like this so now that we've got it all cleaned up relatively well and looking like it's supposed to be there i just dipped it in a bit of acetone and got it sorted we can um pull it all down and start assembling it properly so now we pop in our three our three rollers Our wavy washer on. Now my next step is to make something that centralizes that. Um, when you're prototyping you kind of you put it all together and make it work and then you do the refinement afterwards. There's no point refining something because you'll spend hours developing something that might not ever be, new, be used. So there's a principle and Believe it or not, old Elon Musk got it right. And that is, you never ever put something in something that doesn't need to be there. So the best kind of development is when you can take away parts rather than add them. Adding parts adds complexity. Again, using my patented torque meter, and yes, I should be doing this across the centre. Grab a little bit of test filament. Just make sure that winds in. So, as you can see here, there isn't a lot of purchase on it. As you can see. It's quite solid once it's in there. Nice and firm. Rotate through. It just shifts up and down the filament with such ease. It's really important that this works like this because if it doesn't, it will snap the filament instantly when you fast retract. But as you can see here, you can spin it quite fast and it just progresses up and down the filament. And now we have our extruder. So now we put back on our little spacer. Probably should have cleaned my test full of dust because that will get into the motor. So that's our encoder mount. 
This is one of the encoders that I've been using. So what I'm hoping to do is take the internals out of one of these and just mount it all straight into the extruder um, bracket. And that sits into there and then pushes into here. Like that. And that, that's why that alignment is so important because it has to run that through the center. And that's how you get your positioning. 